Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global eco.co.uk. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go! And this is Paul Cooney live from the Estadio de la Gorbos here in Glasgow <laughs> along with uh, Celtic legend Peter Grant. Evening, Peter. Good evening, Paul. And the Rangers legend Craig Moore. Hi, Craig. Hi, Paul. How are you? Great. Good to see you back from Saudi. We'll yes. talk all things football. Let's start, though, in the Stadio Olimpico. Celtic are there. Kick-off is 5.45, so you don't want to miss the next couple of hours. Celtic starting against Lazio. And we know the story. They need to win to have any chance to take on Feyenoord in two weeks' time with a chance of staying in Europe beyond Christmas. Right, Celtic starting. Hart, Alistair Johnson back in. Carter Vickers, Liam Scales and Greg Taylor. Midfield, McGregor, the captain, O'Reilly and Bernardo is in. And up front, it's Kyogo. And alongside him is Forrest and Yang. Peter, what do you make of the Celtic lineup? We know it's ravaged by injuries. Yes, yeah, so that's the biggest problem. We always said, even at the start of the competition, what you want is your players available. And unfortunately, Celtic have got very important players are missing. You talk about Hatati, you talk about Mieda. Palmer's been excellent in the last few weeks, obviously through suspension with him, that's slightly different. So it's going to take a massive performance and everything you need. Brendan Wright, keep everybody on the pitch and hopefully you have that little bit of fortune but it's going to be a very, very tough night. You've got to be concentrated and obviously when your chances do come along, you have to take them. Craig, Celtic, um, it's not been a great campaign for them. What do you feel tonight? Can Celtic go here and get the point? They came so close yeah. to taking three points just, uh, well, a number of weeks ago against Lazio. Well, look, I, th- I think Brendan um, would have shown all the positive clips from the the home game. Uh, that really was for Lazio a smash and grab because Celtic dominated that match, Paul. So, look, I'm sure there was enough positive um, footage for the players to see to go with some kind of belief that they can go and get a result uh, here in, in, in Italy tonight. Massive, massive game because obviously... Uh, you know, staying involved with a chance of European football. But big, big test. Um, and, and Celtic have got to be at their very, very best. I think taking our opportunities. I also think there's this key moments, decisive moments in the game. You know, if you think of first half away in Feyenoord in the first game, we started the game well. We had opportunities that we could take that could put us in front, but then we concede a uh, uh, a bad moment just right on half time the Lazio game at home a little bit of concentration where you, you know, if you're not going to win the game then certainly don't lose it you know, so that was a point that we that we'd given away uh, in that game and then, and then like you say I think the, the key for us is making sure we have 11 players on the field and uh, when, we, when we have shown that in all the games we've been uh, we've been good in those games and competitive so um, so that's the challenge for us uh, and of course at this level it's 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 the top end of the pitch that quality and then dealing with it dealing with the quality and uh, uh, as a team collectively so um, but I'm excited by it I'm really looking forward to to seeing us play tomorrow I think we can uh, get the result that we want and uh, but like I say we know we have to work very very hard Peter, for those just tuning in, of course, no David Turnbull. And some people thought he would play, scored at the weekend. Are you surprised that he's not in the midfield tonight? Just looking at it tactically, when I see the boys that's playing, the scene like Sir James Forrest who's not played for a while. You know, you could have said, would he have went with Turnbull even wider and played in that area for Lewis Palmer? Because David Turnbull's got lovely right foot, so when he's coming in inside and he can have shots at goal and he can put delivery in the box, the, the end swingers that Palmer does... And it also gives you that extra body in midfield defensively, but a natural midfielder. We're going with two wingers, especially James not playing as many games. Um, I'm not so sure you know, we're going to get so much threat in the box with that because I look at the two wingers and if Yang plays on the left-hand side, he comes in quite a lot and passes the ball square. And James on the opposite side, he never really was one for running by people in that. So there's a lot of passing inside at times. And... That would be my only concern, how you're going to get the delivery into Kyogo on his own and also the fact that David Turnbull gives you a massive goal threat. Rick? 
Yeah, no, look, for me, Turnbull, I think the thing that um, is working against him is probably his mobility. Um, you know, he, 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 box to box, he, he, he's not really that type. He does take up fantastic positions in an attacking sense when Celtic have the ball. And we know he likes to get shots off from distance and he's very accurate in terms of hits a target a lot. I just think that his, uh, his mobility and the way that maybe Brendan wants to, to play has been something that uh, has not seen him get the amount of minutes that he would have liked. Celtic bench is Bain and Morrison, the goalkeepers. Laga Bielka, Phillips, of course, on loan from Liverpool. David Turnbull, Odin Holm, O, Ralston, Welsh back in the squad. Frame a 17-year-old defender and Mikey Johnson. Um, did we give you the Lazio team, which is uh, Providal, of course, in goals. Patrick, Philippe Anderson, Guendouzi, Luis Alberto, the captain, Isaacson. Castellanos, Lazari, Mario Gila, Rovella and Marisic. So, but on the bench, they've got Immobile, they've missed out a few of the top players. Peter, what do you make of that? Well, uh, Immobile being on the bench probably tells you enough because it means yeah. they've got the quality on the pitch. You know, Felipe Anderson's still a very, very good player and very sharp and, and an intelligent footballer. Gwen has been all about. He can start a fight in an empty house, but he's got <laughs> unbelievable like energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. And he's got a bit of uh, energy about him as well. And I thought he sparked him, him and Pedro when both of them come on at Celtic Park. I lifted them and I thought the substitutions worked really, really well for them at Celtic Park. Uh, and that's what got them the, the result, really. Um, so it's a tough game. It's always tough going over there and get everybody fit. So Celtic will have to perform. The boys that are coming in, Bernardo coming in, and he played most of the game at home, if I'm correct. He came on early in that yeah. game. So it's near enough a team like that, you know, similar. It's probably the two wide players that I'll be looking to see what they can perform tonight because they're going to be vital in creating the chances that we definitely need to create. Pedro is also on the bench, and Peter, your fine commentary on uh, Celtic TV. Yeah. <laughs> what was it you said about the, the veteran player? I, I just yeah. said, we've got to be careful when he comes on. People yeah. think his legs is gone, but I said, yeah. in every big competition, in every big game he's played in, he's always got an eye for a goal. <laughs> and yeah. sure as fit, the words will hallow out my mouth. That's what happens. <laughs> and I get the goal yeah. at the back post. Well, we take a call or two. Do you want to pre match? We're going to, you'll miss nothing here. It's live on TNT, but lots of people heading home from you know work, college, uni, school, whatever. Mm. Um, we, you'll miss nothing with us. Here is Brendan Rodgers speaking about the wing options. This is what he was thinking last night. Yeah, listen, it's clear we're missing a lot of players that are really dynamic for us, that can change how fo the, f the football game looks for us. But it's also an opportunity then for, for the other guys to come in. James will be available for the game. Um, he didn't train so much over the international break, so rather than him maybe sit on the bench at the weekend, we wanted to give him some training. Uh, days through until uh, the game tomorrow, so uh, so he's available, which is good for us. Um, but of course, then we have uh, Yang, we have Mikey Johnson on the uh, on the bench. So uh, so yeah, but it, it's always the opportunity. I think there've been lots of players maybe that over the first part of the season maybe haven't quite had the opportunity that they would like. But when you get the opportunity, you have to uh, you have to want to take it. So I'm looking forward to seeing this play and seeing those players perform. Craig, the manager was saying you need to keep 11 players on the park. And in a European game like this, Champions yeah. League, it's self-evident. Yeah, no, it's a must. Uh, like I said, you, you need all players on the field and you need all players being at their, their very peak um, and, and concentration, you know, because that's really been the, the moments that you, you would say that have let Celtic down in this campaign once again. Their overall performances, a majority of the time, have been very, very good. But this top-tier competition uh, punishes mistakes. Yeah. Peter, what was one of the first things you were told you were telling me before the programme? I remember, Paul, every European game, and I, I, things that stick in your mind, and I can always remember, no matter manager I played under, the last thing, and the first thing he said was, make sure everybody stays on the, the pitch. Make sure you stay on your feet. Don't lift your feet and show your studs, because in Europe it's completely different. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's been undoing, because if you think of Feyenoord, Celtic were playing exceptionally well, doing really, really well, and end up, over the piece, they end up losing two players. And it's hard enough, as Craig says, these guys find the guys in space or the guys, if they've got an extra man, as Atletico Madrid proved, because up until then, Celtic had done exceptionally well again. So it's been very, very costly. And when you're at the top table, as Craig rightly says, that's what happens. And that's why the concentration level and keeping everybody on the pitch is massive. And, and I've said it before, um, you know, from what you get week to week here domestically, um, it's a huge, huge step up. And I know myself personally when I was playing in terms of, 
Now, the concentration levels that were required, the thought process that I was going through, it's completely different. The European football, you know you need to be at it. You know you can't make mistakes because if you do, unfortunately, you're picking out the back of the net. Here's a bit more from Brendan Rodgers about uh, what they've learned so far in the campaign. And I can hear some people groaning, some Celtic fans saying, right, I think we know. But here's what the manager was saying last night. We learned that over the course of the competition against Lazio and the other teams that when we are 11 v 11, that we can really compete uh, on the field. And obviously the learning at the end of the, at the, end of the game, sorry, was um, that you have to be concentrated right through to the very end. You know, what we looked like the team was going to win the, the first leg and we ended up uh, losing the game. So, um, so that was a big disappointment considering how well we played and, and taking the lead. But it's, uh, I think what's important for us is making sure we have 11 men on the field. I think in our two away games, we've been down to nine men and, and 10 men. And at this level, that's a, that's a, it's a big ask. So for us, it's about that. Keeping our players on the field, playing the level of football that we know we can and have shown and, uh, and hopefully getting the breaks in the game. Peter, do they go tonight? Is there anything from the weekend? Celtic disappointing with the result, 81% possession. We know the story, 1-1 at the end against Motherwell. Rangers get a lift, but not the win on the Sunday. And I'm going to throw it to you, Craig, because the, the jury's out on Rangers. You know, things are going well under uh, the new manager. Yep. But Sunday, people expected Rangers to win. Will Celtic get any bounce, the fact that Rangers then drop points? I looked at the game, obviously, was at the game on Saturday and... Celtic was probably as well as I've seen them after a European game in the first half, the quickness they played. And anybody that just watched the highlights, there were about four or five opportunities, Matt O'Reilly early in the game, the keepers had yep. saved his feet and whatever, and they never really showed you them. Then they had a couple of, obviously, in the second half, I thought it, when Palman that went off a little bit, I think that, just the timing was wrong. You know, but then they created three or four big chances where O should have scored, Yang should score. Obviously, you have the two penalties, you miss one. But Muller will keep in it, and they're always looking for a set play. But we've got to understand, Paul, and I keep saying it, we become the Wraith Rovers and that in Europe. Mm. Uh, sorry, the yeah, yeah. Ross yeah. Counties and all yeah, that. Sure. We become the lower team, yeah. you know, because all these guys are so much stronger. I mean, physically, mentally, they play at that level all the time. So theirs is a Champions League game nearly week in, week out right. when they play yeah. in their leagues. Ours is not like that. We have to play it in intensity. We have to try and win the games, and that's hard enough playing under that all that I mean you could imagine Rangers going in on Saturday when Muller will equalise they'll be a massive lift yeah, you know sure. but then when it goes 1-0 to late on and then they get the penalty yeah. kick they may get a lift from it but they'll be still disappointed because it was a yeah. chance for them and I always say that's why it's better having the points in the bag when you're talking about the league process yeah. you're better having the points in the bag than the games catch up because it's so important because the games catch up mean nothing sure. you know you've still got to go and play them and win them you know, so I think there was things in Celtic game, but you can give different reasons for that. Yeah, but it's goals that count. That ended up one-one, and it's the same story for Rangers. Mm. And there's a, you know, I've got loads of messages in today after last night saying <laughs> uh, some people are a bit harsh on Rangers. Huh? It was one-one at the end. They hit the bar twice. All the rest of it. And Lazio, of course, lost at the weekend. Yep. We'll come back to them in a moment. Yep. Yep. Craig, what do you think about Rangers? Uh, well, at well, the Tawdry? well, look, Celtic left the door open yep. at the weekend yep. for yep. for Rangers to to walk through and, and close the gap. Yep. Um, one thing you you have to do when you go up to Aberdeen is, is start strong and start aggressive. Uh, Aberdeen were the team that, that did that. Um, they had a great chance. Uh, Sokla, early doors yeah. with, a, mm-hmm. with a great through ball from Clarkson. One-on-one, probably should do better. Butler makes a fantastic save. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first goal conceded. Uh, Miofsky gambles, two central defenders, ball watching. One-nil. Uh, and, then it's, and, and then it's game on. Now, look, Rangers... Um, they, they hung in the match, they, they showed uh, a mental toughness, they created a, a lot of good openings and, and opportunities themselves, crossbar twice. Uh, I thought Ruse was very, very good, yeah. made some, some wonderful saves, point blank from a Balogun header. Um, and in the end, Paul, I, I think a point um, at the end of it, because it looked like it was going to be loss uh, to, yeah. to Rangers, I think could be a valuable point in the, in the title, title race. Asking me in terms of how Rangers are, are sitting now under Clement since he's come in. Um, look, they, they, the style of football hasn't changed. Um, he's starting to get a few players back. Um, he's still tinkering a little bit. There, there's a desire and a, a, and, a, and a real effort that you can see. But I'm yet to see anything really different to, to what was in place under Michael Beale. 
Can we cut to the chase? Was that a penalty? Oh, I think it was a Stonewall yeah, penalty. Sure. I mean, for, for, for me, I can understand Barry Robson being upset about yeah, it yeah. and emotional, but with VAR um, and you're in the box, if you're grabbing at jerseys, like the, the, the penalty for Celtic that they get as well, when you start grabbing people's jerseys in the box, what do you expect? It's a penalty. Garton man was the he was the culprit, wasn't yeah. he? Peter, what do you feel? Most people feel yeah, it was a penalty. I see Neil Lennon wasn't so sure. No, it's a penalty kick, Paul, yeah. because he's lost his marker and I, I think it's really bad play because if a team gets so tight as that, you can't mark man for man. Mm-hmm. You've got to say, Well, I'll I'll deal with the first ball and and it, you'd have thought an Aberdeen team who has a big side, Barry's ball, a big side, their yeah. centre backs are massive. So the first centre half should have went and attacked the ball because the other boy was going to get blocked off no matter what, whether it was Lammer standing in front of him or whatever. So from a tactical point of view, I thought it was just bad marking. But it is a penalty kick. But the interesting thing that's going to happen for me is going forward, every time there's a shot pull in the box mm-hmm. now, is it going to be a penalty kick? That's going to be the interesting thing. Well, it has to be. Well, but well, you've got I've seen a load this season that's not been yeah. called. You know, that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the problem, no matter whether you've got VAR or not. If you do it once, that's what the complaint is. Because people say, well, last week we never got it. Yeah, yeah. And this week, and that's why managers get frustrated. That's why managers end up losing their job. Because yeah. it might be a four or five game run that they don't win. Yeah. <laughs> but the jostling, the jostling, I don't understand. Like The jostling should be done before. Before the delivery, right? So, Paul, what I'm saying is you go and get, you go and get close. You go and get f- physical as such. Like, you get your two arms out where you can block run either way. This, this one where you allow people to get runs, that's when the, the defenders are getting caught and pulling jerseys. And, yes, there, there was a block, but the jersey was being pulled first. Are the two of them not as good as they think they are? The two of them being Rangers and Celtic? In what, in what regard? Well, with the results at the weekend. Celtic fans, 60,000 there. Yep, they'd all the possession. And I know the highlights didn't show you, but they came away 1-1. And oh, well, Rangers, going up with great yeah. confidence, they came away, came yeah, away yeah. 1-1. No, I mean, look, the, 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 the challenge for Rangers and Celtic, Paul, is every single game that they play is a cup final for whoever they're playing against. You know, And then you take away, you get, you get to the old firm game and, and that brings a whole new... Um, you know, kind of feel anyway. But like I said, the Aberdeens, the, the Motherwells, the Kilmarnocks, every single team that gets that opportunity to play against the old firm, it's a cup final for them. You follow the next two or three results after that and you tend to see that there's a little drop because they've put so much into that match against Rangers or Celtic. Yeah, and the thing is, Paul, well, the disappointing thing for Celtic's point of view is St. Johnson dropped two points and we dropped two points against Mullow. So there's four points. That is the big disappointment more than anything else. If you're playing that game at Fir Park, people can think, well, that can happen sometimes. As it nearly did earlier in the season. But that's a disappointment. People maybe, as Craig says, maybe going to Pataudry, yep. well, that looks like a good result. You really won one. Because I think earlier in the season, Rangers retain a 1-1 at Pataudry. Now, yep. since Clermont's come in, I think they were expecting the victory, mm-hmm. especially the disappointment that Celtic had on the Saturday, picking up the points. But that's the nature of the beast. And I said to you, it's not Celtic versus Rangers that's going to be the counter. Mm. It's always going to be how the points you pick up against everybody else because the Celtic Rangers ones look after themselves. For sure. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Just trying to get the key questions for you because the Celtic game will be on soon. <laughs> and it all comes back to we can be in Stadio or whatever <laughs> it comes back to Celtic versus Rangers. Rangers right. Celtic versus Absol- Celltic, November. Absolutely, Paul, but that's December the way it is. December the 30th, fact, it's just over a month away. It, that, it comes back to that. Yeah, I thought I might get controversy from you on the... The penalty kick was it, wasn't it? What about? Yeah, no, it, it no, was not a penalty. Me, not exactly. for me. But referees, what's going to happen? I see the big meeting has been in London today of the international refereeing board, and they're talking about extending VAR to include uh, looking at bookings again. They're not adding. They're looking not adding. at corners. Looking at throw-ins. I mean, the game's going to last two hours plus, isn't it? That's incredible, Paul. I mean, I, I think they thought they'd been, thought been looking to shut it up and put it in the box and put it away again and let's go back to goal line technology. And they've said that it's not going away. No, they not. said yeah. if they're going to, they're just going to, as, You talk to supporters, the most important people in football are the supporters. Yep. You talk to them, I can't find any supporters that enjoy it. Mm. Now they used to say, I used to leave five minutes before the end of the game now so I could go out the traffic. They used to say, now they're saying... Well, I don't leave because there's another 25 minutes still yeah, to get played, you know, crazy. because of are and all this. Is that not value for money? <laughs> you know, but that's yeah. what they're saying. So yeah. the disappointment is, this, the problem is they're saying they're not enjoying through it because there's so many minutes wrapped up. And I keep getting back to it. If they're going to use it, the guy in the, the, the box upstairs should be just saying penalty kick, yeah. not a penalty, end off. 
They send it, say they there, oh, you better go and look at it. No, do you think it's a penalty? Because you're a referee. You, you know what I think should happen? I, sh I think sh uh, the, the, the associations or member federations should come together and say, you know what, we're not having it, right? Because um, the product that is now on display uh, is is not what it needs to be. The fans, are, the fans are losing out. The players are missing out. We're missing out. I can understand there may be the international competitions. It might be, you know, the VAR stay, stick with that, stick with the Euro, stick with the World Cup, stick with those kind of things. See domestic competitions. Goal line technology, Gray, I'm, I'm with you on that, mate. That's yeah. enough. That's enough. It's like well, EA. Well, well, Paul, I yep. look at it and I think so the Championship in England, mm -hmm. they've got the richest game at the end of this season. Yep. Yeah. In the world, I know. And they don't have VAR throughout the season. That's true. They don't have all the way down. Yeah. But all the managers are losing their job all the way down yep. because of results and terrible decisions. Mm -hmm. But that's always been football. Mm -hmm. You know, that's part of it. But at least the supporters could enjoy it, celebrate a goal. The players yep. could celebrate. It's the hardest thing in football. I criticise players when I don't see them smiling yep. when they score a goal. But none of them are even smiling now because they're all looking across. The first thing they do is look at the linesman and they can be 10 yards onside. How can they look to extend it? Just a quick final yeah, thing, Paul, sure. because I know you're looking to move on there. Yeah. How can they be looking to extend it when it probably hasn't really had all the uh, reviews um, required. And, and what, I, what I mean by that is, is obviously the decisions, the important decisions, right, wrong, yet yeah, that side. The game that's going now potentially 10, 15, 20 minutes longer. What about the injuries that are being picked up in the game of football now for yep. the players? I, I've not heard any studies or research done. Um, we're not getting inf any information on that. So for me, it's far too early to be looking at potentially extending it without actually knowing what we're dealing with. Kickoff is 20 minutes away. Lazio against Celtic. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go! It's the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Thank you so much for making the switch to number one for Glasgow, Lanarkshire, Renfrewshire, Dumbartonshire. Where else will we throw in? <laughs> Stellingshire. Peter, where else? Click Manninshire. Oh, you've yeah. already said Lanarkshire. That's good enough oh, for that's me. That's good enough for you. Good enough for him. <laughs> we mentioned Lanarkshire. We mentioned Celtic for him. Keeps him happy. And for you, Craig, we'll mention Rangers and Adelaide. <laughs> Ad no, not Adelaide. No, not, Ad not, not Adelaide. Adelaide. <laughs> where will we see? Sydney, uh, of course. Uh, you can yeah. go Sydney. I handle that. Which was uh, Sydney weather at the moment. How are the temperatures over there? Yeah, yeah. Coming, into, coming into the summer. Nice. Nice, a little bit different to here, let's say. For sure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but where else would you rather be? Oh, yeah. mate, I'm loving Certainly it here. Not Edinburgh. <laughs> it's, it's, all all it's, it's, all it's a great city, Edinburgh. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not as good as they think it is. It's a great city for uh, get me out of this one now. Right, we're only what 15 minutes away mm -hmm. from a big one. Lazio against Celtic. If you're just tuning in, Celtic. Well, not maybe too many surprises from what we heard last night from Brendan Rodgers. Um, he's gone with Yang and Forrest and Kyogo, obviously up front. Hart, Johnson, Carter, Vicar, Scales and Taylor, McGregor, O'Reilly and Bernardo and the three I mentioned up front. Looking at the positives, they've got the, the, the strongest defence at the moment. Peter, would you agree? Yeah, I think Young Skills has been excellent. Carter Vickers coming back in has helped him as well. But to be fair to the young man, at the start of the season, he was getting questioned. I'd, as I said many times, I watched him in pre-season. I thought he'd done very well. Uh, but it still looked as if he was going to be going out to Aberdeen. And then yep. all of a sudden, through circumstances, and that's what you need as a young player, that opportunity. I thought he's done exceptionally well in the, in the big European games. I thought he's he played really, really well against top quality opposition. When's he going to get the new contract that's been talked about? Because he's out of the contract, what, at the end of the season? Right? I'm not sure if he did 18 yeah. months. I'm not 100% well, sure. Yes, I'm not 100% yeah. sure in sure. that. But yeah. if, even at that, Paul, listen, his performances deserve a new contract. Yeah. You know, the, the circumstances now may be slightly different mm -hmm. because he's yeah. a starter and more cash. Or gets more cash yeah. or other clubs are interested in him because, let's be honest, left-sided, Craig will tell you, left-sided central defenders are not easy to get. And a lot of people like that balance now because of the way they play now. They like a natural left foot on that side. And to be fair, I thought his defending has been really well. He's done really well in it against top quality players. And I think that's always the makings of a good player. Very steady, Paul. And, and, and as a defender, you're looking for... Um, defenders that are steady and consistent and, and Scales has come in and that's exactly what he's been um, obviously grown in terms of you know confidence and that's come with the regular matches but touched on this before he's he's probably one of the first names now yeah. um, that goes down on a team sheet uh, such has been his performances There is interest in him so I'm sure that will be sorted um, We'll hear a bit more from Brendan Rogers. Before we go there McCausland is the deal done? Craig, I know you've been out the country, but they say that his contract is ready, done and dusted. Yeah, well, if, if, again, um, 
fantastic for the boy if, if that's the case. He's come in, he's, he's, he's made an impact. Uh, again, younger players, they're not going to let you down with enthusiasm and energy. He's shown exactly that. Um, and, and if he extends, look, his next challenge is, is to try and force his way into that team week in, week out, Paul, because you can be at the big clubs, right? But you've got to be playing football. Yeah. Otherwise, for me, it's pointless. Is he going to play, do you think, Ross McCausland, regularly? On a week-to-week basis um, at this moment in time. He's certainly got the manager um, thinking about him, which is important. Uh, do I see him as a, as a starter week in, week out at this stage? No. Peter, what do you think of Ross McCausland from what you've seen? Well, I've seen him from, as you excited me. I think, as I said to you last week, Paul, yeah. I think I've seen him playing in Cyprus, was it? And I thought he came on and made a complete difference to the Rangers team, gave it an energy mm-hmm. and enthusiasm. He plays a position slightly different. He plays a little bit wider, like an old winger. A lot of teams are playing with that third forward, if you know what I mean now. So it's slightly different. He's been asked to change his role. But he gets in at the back post, which he did, I think it was a Livingston game a couple of times. Mm-hmm. He got in there, he got a goal chopped yeah, off. Right. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's picking up the things that the manager is add, trying to add to his game, like that wide player getting in at the back post. But no, he's been exciting. But as Craig says, it's a position too. You've got to get in there and play constantly. Because people then expect you, you, that's the only way you get that energy, going and taking people on, is where the more games you get. And it's a, it's a position, Peter, as you know, that see for a younger player, and I'm not saying he's young yet, I think he's 22, right? That see if there's games where you're not getting the ball and therefore you're not, you're not feeling uh, involved in the match and you've not got the, 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 then the confidence and all that sort of stuff. So as a younger player, it's so important to be able to still contribute to the game of football, even if you're not getting loads of supply. Yeah, um, absolutely. That's Absolutely. really, really important. And, and the thing is, Paul, you know in that position, nine times out of ten, especially now, that's a position that gets changed. You look forward to this game tonight. I'm coming back to Celtic. Let's hear from Brendan Rodgers. He knows it's a, a must win. Very much so. I think it's a game we're under no illusion what, what we need to do in the game. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. We, we have to win the game. Have to win the game, says Brendan Rodgers. A bit more on that. I think it's for our own personal pride as a team. Uh, clearly as a club that's what we want to do we, we know the challenges um, that we have at this level but um, and I also think the, the points total doesn't quite reflect the performance level that we've had but we, uh, we have two games now, we know what we need to do and uh, we are going to give it everything to, uh, to achieve uh, the victories that we need Peter, uh, Champions League football was missing for a number of years for Celtic, for Rangers as well, for a long time. They're in the Champions League, so I know you, you don't want to just turn up. Can they do something tonight? I would love them to do something. It's yeah. going to be very tough, okay. Paul, even when you've lost, your, I would call your big players. Yeah. A lot of big players are out who are big performance. You say Palma has been playing exceptional. I just thought Atati be sent his forum and Mieda. Yeah. They're three big players that would be definite starters. Yeah. No matter how the, who else was playing or whatever, they'd be definitely playing in this game. So you miss them as a blow, but you always want to qualify for the Champions League. I know people come on yeah. here and say, oh, maybe we're at the level of the Europa League, and forget that. Mm. You want to win the league here, that's the most important one out of them all. Win the league here, get into the Champions League. And I still believe, on a one-off occasion, where in Glasgow, you can get that result. You can get that big performance. And they've been, they've had the bar so many times. And I know we keep saying that, I understand that, but that's fact. You know, because there is a massive, and the gulf financially, as I say, between the yeah. Europe, top European sure. teams to com- compare to Celtic at this time, you can't buy the players that they can make the difference at that level. You know, that is the difference and that's the level you would like to be, but you still want to be at that party. But I, I, would, take, I would take my medicine every year oh, if, I meant, sure. if I meant playing in the Champions League. Yeah. Um, right. For me, it's, it's so important in terms of ongoing recruitment and trying to attract people to your football club. But as a player, Peter, we know oh, wow. you're playing in the, the Premier competition. Mm-hmm. You want to be there every single year if you possibly can. And if you're getting some harsh lessons along the way, that's, that's football. So as a Rangers legend, you don't regret last year. The experience in Champions League wasn't good for Rangers, no. but did it do them no, any harm? No, no. For me, it's, it's again, it's it's a level that you must continue to, to strive at, Paul. My Champions League debut was away to Juventus. We lost 4-1. Wow. Um, you know, take that kind of thing. It was welcome to the, to, to the top table. Um, and it was, a, it was a harsh, harsh night. Um, but you still want to be there. Any good players up against you? Uh, <laughs> I think there was a player yeah, called, yeah. Um, what's his name? Uh, yeah. Del Piero. Yeah, he he kind of went okay. Yeah. Viali and Ravinelli up top. They, they, they weren't too bad. That was a tough night. Fantastic tough night. Names, they? But that's what I'm saying. That's what you'd miss out in, Paul. And that's what you don't want to yeah. miss out in. You want to be involved. Not the supporters want to be involved. And I know we take some harsh lessons at times. 
But the reality is we've got to go there and I would rather the Real Madrid's and that will turn up to play Glasgow Celtic all the time. That's what I would rather all the time. So that's you need to be at that party. Here's Brendan Rogers speaking about the experience of Champions League. The two standouts for me is the, the experience that the, the players will gain playing from pl against players at this level, players that have been consistently at this level. So that's always important when you come to play against top-level players. It's, uh, it's really about the concentration for the full 90-plus minutes in the game. And also, it's, it's obvious, but at this level... It's about quality as well, and especially at the top end of the uh, of the field, all the teams have have forward players that can really hurt you, that can make the difference. You don't get the number of chances that you might do domestically, so you, then you have to be clinical. So quality and experience is what uh, improves you as a, an individual and as a team at this level. And what about tonight's opposition? Well, firstly, Maurizio is a very experienced coach. I, um, he obviously done incredible work at Napoli and, and then came to Chelsea and, and produced a very good football team. And then has obviously come back to here and, uh, and he's a very experienced coach and a very talented coach who, uh, who asks his players to play in a really attacking philosophy. You know, they play 4-3-3. Midfield are, are flexible. Luis Alberto I know really well, who's a really gifted player technically, and he now has experience from when I knew him as a 20-year-old at Liverpool. Uh, and they have front players, wingers and, and strikers that can, can score goals. So um, they will obviously be disappointed. They lost the league game at the weekend and, uh, and haven't won in, I think, three games. But... They have talent, and they and they've shown that in this competition. They've lost what six of the first thirteen games, Lazio. Does that give Celtic more hope tonight, or could they be just there, poised to bite back? No, I think. Listen, Paul. You always hope the opposition are playing on their nerves. You always hope you're looking for anything you can do. People were saying, well, Celtic dropped points at home against Motherwell, the exact same way, you know, and they've lost a few of their top players. I always feel we have to have our top players available for these games. I really do, because. When you talk about the boys that's out of the game like Palma and that, assists and goals is a lot. You know, Hatati's got that quality, you know, as well. So that's a blow, you know. And Maeda, what he does to the opposition, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, to create havoc at times and make, make people make mistakes and spot everybody else on. So they're big blows for me. And to sc and I just think, I'm looking through the team, that's my concern tonight. Yeah. I, I, I take Kyogo out of it. I'm thinking Matt O'Reilly, that's it as in goals goes yeah. and I think when you're in this competition then there's talked about wide players and strikers and midfield players get forward for that so we don't really have that and that's why I was surprised that maybe Turnbull didn't start Quick break kick off is next The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy tailored and renewable energy products to suit your commercial and domestic needs Let's go Waiting for kick-off in the Stadio Olimpico Magnificent Stadium there where Brendan Rodgers lost with Leicester City against uh, Jose Mourinho's uh, Roma just a couple of years ago, of course, in the Conference League. Uh, teams are out. They've had the theme. Craig Moore, what do you think is going to happen tonight? Well, first and foremost, looking at that, what a great stadium that mm. is. Um, pitch looks amazing. Look, it's a, it's a tough ask for Celtic, but like I said, Lazio... Middle, middle of the city, uh, and, and Celtic, I think, will go with some kind of confidence here. I think they will come up short, though, in the evening, though. I'm going to go 2-1 to Lazio. The two skippers are just um, shaking hands, shaking hands with the referee. Have a just check that, Peter. Celtic playing in the away strip, they're in the black strip. Uh, Lazio in their normal light blue, looks a bit like Man City. Mm. What are you thinking? It's going to be a tough night. As I say, I'm, I'm hoping I'm completely wrong, Paul. I've, I can't see us getting the victory that we desperately need, I must admit, because you look at the quality they have. Celtic would have to play at their very best. You know, and every opportunity that comes along, you probably need to take one out of two. That's the sort of level you'll have to be at this. Because there's not going to be many chances, and I don't think, you know, because when I look at the players we have, probably you're talking about Matt O'Reilly and Kyogo as your goal threats, and then the other things would probably need to come for set plays. You know, and, and that's when the difficulty comes. I just think it'll be a hard night for us. I hope to God I'm 100% wrong, mm. but I found, fancy that show tonight. In the huddle at the moment, there's Big Joe Hart, who well, gets so much experience and has done so well. Tougher at the weekend with the goal. I wonder what 
Callum McGregor said to the players there, Peter, and he is, Maurizio Sarri paid tribute to him today, saying what a brilliant player the Celtic captain is. Quite rightly so. I mean, and he's one of the chosen few that plays near enough every game. And I think that's the difference you've got. People say you can't play the amount of games they're playing nowadays. I think Callum's only 63 every every season. You know, 90 minutes every game near enough. So I'm expecting a big performance, and we'll need a big performance from us because we need, you need to control the ball. And as long as you've got the ball at this level, the opposition officer can't score. But that's going to be so so important. Game's underway, Celtic in possession. We're watching it here on TNT. We're on the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. You feel for the Celtic fans, don't you, in that there's, what, 3,500 there, but actually there could have been more because the stadium is far from full. Yeah, listen, that's you always want, you want your supporters there. They've done remarkable again to get there. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's one of these places I always felt Italy was uh, intimidating, you know. I, I just think you've just got to be careful when you go there. As I say, I hope they're singing and dancing tonight and just keep themselves safe. That's the most important thing and they get a performance from the team. Nothing like it, is there, Craig? Champions oh. League in a stadium like this against... I was going to say, they are Italian giants, but they're yeah. not at the best. This is not the days when they'd... No, Gascoigne. but, but yeah. still, like I said, the, the, the evening, the, the lead into the matches for the supporters, it's a top table, the Champions League football. Still great, great nights, Paul. And, and as I said earlier, for Celtic and for Rangers... Even though maybe the results, Rangers last season, Celtic this season, you still want to be involved in these tournaments. And the positive, Kyogo, he just needs one sniff sometimes and he gets a goal. Absolutely. And the interesting thing is I see it looks as if he's playing James Forrest on the left-hand side. Right. You know, that's a wee sort of change what he's done. He's kept Yang on the opposite side. So maybe James is coming in there and going to drive in that box, which you'll have to do because you'll have to get support to the front man or he'll become very, very isolated. There's no doubt of that. But listen... Craig's 100% right. When you look at the fixtures and you're playing the Lazio's, you're playing the Feyenoord's, all big names in European football, and then you go to the next level when you're talking about the Real Madrid's and that, so that's why you always want to be involved and that's the only way as a player you're going to get better. And the other two are playing tonight, aren't they? So Celtic still have a chance if they can win tonight and then if they can beat Feyenoord. And Craig, that would be some game against the, the Dutch. The, 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 the teams have got history because obviously the 1970 yeah. European final. Yeah, no, very much so. And, and look, I mean, at the end of the day, you go into to every single game with a belief mm. that you can you can make a difference and you can go and win the game of football. Um, so two huge games remaining. Um, fine order. When I, when I think of fine order, uh, do, who do I think of? Do I think of... Uh, Giovanni Van Brunch? Nah, yeah, no, yeah, but also um, big Pierre, Pierre, Pierre Van Orden. Yeah, Hordel. Larson. That's right. Uh, Larson, uh, not, yeah. not so much Larson, uh, but... Not, not because of... No, and because Wim, Wim Janssen got dressed up. Wim Janssen signed him from there. Wim Janssen, when yeah, I was yeah, there, he yeah, signed yeah. him from there. And Wim was a massive player and obviously a fantastic man. Done, yeah, yeah. Uh, won the league, so, obviously, with Celtic. So there's a big connection there. Yeah, you know? massive, so, massive connection. Tough, tough game. Like I said, you know, in terms of, you know, fine, the way this final couple of games plays out as well, if Lazio get a win here, fine or so much to play for, but... But yeah, yeah, again, Craig, they've got a striker in Jimenez. He scored three again at the weekend. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he's, he's struggling, he's, he's he's struggling got, for form. That's what I'm saying. He's been a goal scoring <laughs> yeah. machine. And he missed the game. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the games, you know. So he's been a goal scoring machine. And, and that's what you need at this level. Somebody yeah. can steal your goal out of nothing. Yeah. But even back to Paul Sorry, yeah. even these, you know, this particular competition and the big teams that you can draw. Graham, what is it like at the start of the season when you know you're in Champions League football when it's getting to the draw? Like the players are in that dressing room, you're watching the draw, you're so excited to get the big teams. Oh, you see Bucky Thistle the other day there? Yes. That's what it looks like for us. <laughs> you know, when you get that opportunity to play that. Well, it's Real That's Madrid, or Juventus, eh? whatever, you know, you think your beauty. There we go. These are the special nights. This is what's, well, when we were at Celtic Park. This is what Celtic Park was built for, to be playing hosting these nights. And I would say that last year, Rangers are obviously at a bad time and Celtic never uh, thing as well. But the Wednesdays and the Tuesdays, them coming to Glasgow, yeah. all the big yeah. ones rolling in, was magnificent, you know? And it keeps Scottish football on the map and that's mm. the most important thing. Any big ones last season? It was only oh, Real Madrid, there was a few, absolutely. Napoli. Keep oh, naming yeah. them. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Paul. What a way to turn up on a, yeah. a, a Tuesday and a Wednesday evening for Scottish football. You can't beat it, can you? What's happening? Four minutes gone. It's the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Bit different tonight because the Celtic kickoff is early. It's Paul Cooney with Peter Grant, who's played more games in Europe than uh, he can remember because he's not got a great memory. <laughs> no, he hasn't. I'm kidding. He remembers everything about it. And Craig Moore, who's <laughs> oh, oh, also half chance, a chance Kyogo. for Celtic. Kyogo. Yeah, yeah. Kyogo sort of like gets on a half turn, edge of the, the 18 yard box, left footed strike, doesn't generate enough power to to really test the goalkeeper, but certainly positive enough for for Celtic. 
Yeah, they've started well in the respect of that, as they have done in all the games. And they've had the first shot in target, but to be fair, they've played the game in Lazio's half, they've not stepped off them. They've played high, Bernardo seems to be supporting the front men quickly, you know, and they're in the box again. Yes, yeah, some good play down the left there, Greg Taylor, Matt O'Reilly was involved, and James Forrest that you pointed out right way is on the left. Yes. Um, has he started well? In his yeah, that's what I'm saying, year? so he's getting in there, he's, he's been positive, and as I say, Bernardo seems to be the one that's playing a little bit higher. He's putting pressure on further up the pitch and I think you need to do that because if Kyogo gets isolated it becomes a very, very long night as Craig will tell you when your centre forward gets isolated that he's special needs European games you're playing a man down if they don't and as I said Celtic as I said, have been on the front foot so fair play to them Feyenoord against Atletico Madrid who do you fancy there tonight Peter? That's the 8 o'clock game tonight you can watch it later I, I, never, yeah. I, I don't really fancy anybody against Atletico Madrid I just think yeah. they, they find a way somehow mm. You know, the big thing is Feyenoord have got, they've got a goal scorer at this moment in time, you know, who is in fire. But as I say, Atletico always just seem to find a way. Craig, yeah. as a defender, Celtic so far started well enough. They've not been, Joe Hart had one touch just a couple of minutes ago and collected it easily. Yeah, no, look, so, so far so good. Um, Lazio just had a, uh, a, not an effort, but a forward run. Uh, so a longer ball that uh, Johnson defends well. So at uh, this early stage, just after five minutes, Celtic seem to have settled pretty well into the match. Craig, one of your old clubs, uh, Newcastle, playing against PSG tonight. Now, they beat them, uh, as we know, a few weeks ago at the yep. start of the campaign. Seems a long time ago, but we'll watch here come Lazio ball into Ooh. the box. A header, but it's not a great one, but the ball is still in play. Down the right, another opportunity for the Italians. Play it to the far post. Headed. Good header. Bang goal. Yep. Yeah, good defensive header. Has conceded the corner, Johnston, but it was it was the right play. Just prior to that, cross comes in for Lazio from the left-hand side. I actually think Guendouzi should do better. Um, gets a header on, but um, it goes it goes well wide, but does come alive again, but Celtic concede the corner. And, and that's the thing, Paul, you know, at this level, all of a sudden Lazio went up the pitch, and I thought we'd get fortunate because Guendouzi should do better with his header, but the, if he misses Guendouzi, there's space at the back post because Greg Taylor's been sucked all the way in. You know, so there's no doubt this is a good side, but... This is what we've got to get better. We lost a late goal on Saturday for set play, so we've got to defend us better. You hope it doesn't finish the way that did. You know, it's a similar, it's a corner. Far side, cameras on the main stand here in the Stadio Olimpico. Oh, Into the box, right delivery. Park comes out, he punches it. Two attempts at it, second one works, but it's still in the edge of the box, still in play. Header easily taken by Joe Hart. Yeah, I think it was fortunate Joey came and misses the first one, but he's made a decision to come. A lot of bodies in there. Obviously, Lazio have looked at it and thought they've not defended the set plays particularly well. He takes it away from Carter Vickers. The ball stays alive and we get away with it. So, thank for God that scrape got out of the road. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Buck Knight, what a delivery for the corner. But that's what I'm saying. Brilliant at this, at this level... That's what they've all got, haven't they? They've all got a top quality delivery and that's why you can't... We talk about concentration, not giving silly set plays away because of the quality of that delivery. But it's interesting, they all surrounded Joe. Yep. You know, that was yep. an interesting thing. After Carter the Vickers give him some protection there yeah, as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Because they mentioned him in glowing terms because obviously everyone knows Joe Hart. Everyone does in European football, but they'd maybe target Celtic and they don't have a lot of height as well. well. Exactly, that's why we can't give away silly set plays. See, that's why I was slightly different for Craig because I'm watching them every week and when Alistair yeah. heads it by for the corner, yeah. I would rather he clears his box with it yeah. if he possibly can because yeah. I don't think they've defended the set plays as well. As and well. it's not necessarily yeah. down people not doing their jobs. I just think it's the lack of inches we have. Well, the, the thing is as well, Peter, sometimes, like for me, I go, you know what, I, I felt he made the right decision because you've got a time to, to, to get yourselves together yeah. again, to reset. But at the same time, if you don't focus, get concentrated and defend it properly... Absolutely. Uh, then it's a, a, a good opportunity. Yeah, you're right. You know, I've just spotted the greatest ranger of all time, John Gregg, commander of the British Empire, Seen CBE, uh, with Prince William yesterday getting that gong. Tremendous. What a brilliant guy John Gregg is. Um, you wouldn't have wanted to play against him, I reckon, Peter, before your time as well. No, he's a lovely goodness, man. What a gentleman. No, every yeah. time I met him, Paul was very respectful. And every time, time I think he, John, I think he... God rest him, Big Billy. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's just the two captains yeah, of the iconic sure. captains of the clubs. And I just think, um, fantastic for him and his family, you know. He, honestly, the greatest yeah. ever Ranger, Paul. Yeah. And I mm. remember when, when Dick Avocat was the manager, um, John Gregg was involved in and around about the first team. But he was, <laughs> Dick had him, he was picking up cones and stuff. I go, no, no, Greggy, that's not happening, mate. That's not yes. happening at all. The greatest ever Ranger. You're an absolute legend of this football club. 
We'll pick up the cones. You're not having you pick up the cones. Yep. As Lazio come Ooh. forward, a chance for them. It's just over the bar. So that was dangerous. Good ball into the box. Ooh. Picked up maybe an injury there. Down. Yep. I'll tell you more. Still it's Felipe there. Anderson. The yeah, yeah again. I think Alistair Johnson takes his eye off and you watch him. He's not defended it well. And that's the area they, they lost the goal. Granduzzi's got a lovely cross in. Alistair's body position doesn't see. Um, Felipe Anderson and that is a massive chance yeah, and he runs off of um, Yang as well yeah. um, so again we, we, when you're not communicating there and you're right Johnson doesn't see it yeah. he's closed off yeah. it's a really really good opportunity uh, fortunately for Celtic uh, it goes just wide the post yeah but the full backs it's not a vintage time AJ was out there and he's had some injuries as the Johnson started brilliantly we know that uh, mid last season and Greg Taylor I think the biggest problem you've got Paul is it's I, I don't give them excuses through, through fitness because I think when you get to that level, Craig Earl, if you don't see the man in ball, you're in the wrong position. That's the basic you were always told as a defender. Craig will tell you that more than me. And I just think he's got to open his shoulder there. Even if there's nobody there, at least you can clear it away. You know, anything. But if he swings his leg up and he hit Felipe Anderson, if Felipe Anderson doesn't get the ball, it can be a penalty kick. Yes. How many times you see it now? Yeah, you're just swinging yeah. your legs yeah. because you don't know where you're, because you're caught that way and you panic. Yep. And that's exactly what he did. So he's fortunate enough that Anderson actually got on it because the referee could have been left with a decision to make. Tough, tough position, the fullback position, Paul. Well, it's yeah. Because you really, you, you've, when you're not picking up, you've got to be yeah. thinking, OK, where's the danger? And making sure that you can screen and see both sides. John Gregg, European Cup Winners' Cup captain, 1972. He was MB at that point, so just after it. Six Scottish Cups, at five Scottish League titles. And uh, there'll be League Cups there as well. He should be Sir John Gregg. Absolutely. As Billy should have been Sir Billy McNeil. Mm -hmm. There's no question. Absolutely, Absolutely no question. Absolutely not. You talk about the, should you, have been yeah, Sir exactly. Jockstein. You talk no about, these, you talk about yeah. these guys, Paul. Yeah. And no matter what football background you have, yeah. you know, you'll always have the utmost respect for them, yeah. what they've done for their clubs and what they represented and the way they represented yeah. their clubs, more importantly. For sure. We're going to have to take a break for the news, but you'll miss nothing. It's nil-nil at the moment. There was that opportunity a few moments ago, went past the post. So, Peter, your description as we head for the news that Celtic, it's early days, but you can see the threat that Lazio Well, carry. Celtic, the first yeah. five minutes started very well. Now Lazio are pushing up on them and Celtic are turning the ball over quite a lot and it's not allowing them out. Now we've just got to be careful. There's a raised foot here, as he's, Bernardo's not seen him, but you typical Italians are trying to get him sent off, but he's yeah. not actually facing. Sure. You know, so but it's not, it's not, it's not as bad as I thought. But they're, ma they're making it sure that yeah. you're going sure. to get a yellow card. That's for sure. They're going to try. News is next, and then we're back. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. For your free energy home survey and a bespoke quote, call 0800 233 Let's go. Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk. And we're live, 19 minutes gone, over in Rome, Lazio nil, Celtic nil. And Peter Grant, Celtic had a good chance two minutes ago. Yeah, it was a good ball through, Kyogo's got on the end of it, but it was very good defending because it's one of the ones that's in between the goalkeeper and the defender, and the defender made the decision to hook it away, and it was the right decision. But it was a, an opportunity, you know, and the other one was Bernardo breaks forward really well, and then his final ball, and at this level, that's the most important part, well, at any level, and the most important thing is the final thing you're doing. He just gave the wrong pass out to Yang, and it was caught out in a very dangerous area. It was a 3v2 situation. What's your impression so far? I think it's been equal, Paul, to be fair. I think the first five minutes Celtic had, and then I think the next ten minutes last one, and then the last five minutes Celtic have had that. So it's been quite pretty equal. But Celtic have knocked the ball about. They've handled the, the ball well yet again to get to the final third, and that just seems to break down there. And if you do that, keep constantly doing that at this level, it's only a matter of time before the opposition settle into the game and they maybe have a different level, like a, a Mobley sure. on the bench who can punish you when they've yeah. got opportunities. Pedro, you know? Absolutely, well. all these guys. The way, it's, the way it's set up, Granny, I just think that um, Celtic have settled very well into the game, no doubt about that. Lazio are not 
working really, really hard to stop them from playing and getting on the ball and that sort of stuff. So it's it's even more important, I think, for Celtic to make sure in transition that they're switched on. You know, it's when you lose nice. the ball to make sure that you concentrate and defend properly because that's actually the area that Lazio potentially look as if they can hurt Celtic tonight. Well, you know, as a defender, when managers talk about concentration, Paul, that is that. And the biggest concentration yeah. comes for the fact that when you're in possession, believe it or not. Because mm-hmm. as soon as you give it away, their first looks forward. Yeah. And if your defenders have switched off thinking, oh, we're in good possession here, all of a sudden they're running at the back end of you and they're getting an opportunity from it. So this is the difference at this level. You give the ball away cheaply, all of a sudden you can be defending your own goal. How's the crime count going? I mean, the, the manager said keep 11 players on the park and we know in VAR days and look at Atletico a few weeks ago, they claimed for everything. There was something earlier on, wasn't there, that they were trying to get the referee to look yeah, at? Yeah, well, Bernardo's went to hook one, yeah. obviously, and he's lifted his leg, but it, if you look back at it, it looked absolutely nothing but typical Italian lying down the ground trying to get players booked and that, that is a big part. No, it's a big part of their I know, game. No, sure. I remember speaking yeah. to Paolo Di Canio yeah. when I played with Paolo and Paolo said when they were kids, they were told anywhere, if, especially a forward player, contact. any contact go down. That, they were told, told, they yeah. were told that as kids, you know. So it doesn't surprise you because they felt then they had the quality for set play deliveries. You used, used to annoy me, Paul. You know, yeah. like I, when I used to get booked all those times when I hadn't even touched anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, God. Yeah. Was Andy Walker born in Italy? Or? Uh, I was a few. Tommy Bob was the only guy I could see. God rest him. T- yeah. uh, trip myself up. He was brilliant at it. Uh, you know, he was running a hundred miles an hour and he could wrap his leg round his leg and dive. Here comes Lazio incredible. at the other end, just outside the box. It's nil nil. Twenty two minutes gone. A bit of danger, but um, yeah, Peter, what are you thinking here? It's I'm just still a, a wee bit concerned. Yeah. About, Greg's done the yeah. exact same as Alistair Johnson did earlier. They're looking across the pitch, and they seem to have an overload at each side of the yeah. back post. Mm. And if we keep getting sucked across to the the ball, there's a position at the back post where Lazio. I've got a midfielder. Good news, he's running between the centre backs. But then it drags a full back in yeah. and there's an overload at the back and it's happened on both sides of the pitch so it's something we have to be very, very careful at. Could this be an omen for Celtic tonight for the full team, the young Celtic side, a 2-0 win today? Fantastic. In Rome against yeah, Lazio? Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic for them because I, I'm not sure that I don't think they've won many games in this competition and it's always good for them because it's so difficult because they're playing completely different yeah. type of football for what they play back here. And that's the levels, if you're going to play in the Champions League, you want to start getting victories and getting that confidence. Even as a young man, there's nothing yeah. better. They, they'll feel great about themselves that they've come away with a 2-0 victory in Rome, as you very, say. Very good win, because I actually watched uh, the game that was here, Paul. I think it was yeah. 1-0 or 2-1 to Lazio. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Celtic have learnt from that first game. They've gone away from home and, and 2-0, as Peter says, is a really, really good result. You'll miss nothing here in the Go Radio Football Show. We'll keep you right up to date. 0-0 with, well, just through past the halfway stage in the first half. 23 minutes gone, 0-0. A couple of the other headlines today. The Rangers manager, Philippe Clement, is said to be keen to add a new left-back and a striker in January. Now, listen, as you do, carefully to Barry. We listen carefully to you as well, both of you. But last night he was saying, yeah, there will be new signings, maybe more than two. They might be alone in January, but these are players ready to play. Uh, is a striker going to be one of them? And what about left back? We know that, you know, Barisic people keep saying, is he going to go? Um, what yeah. do you reckon, Yilmaz? Ah, look, I think, I think it's a definitely a position that um, Rangers can strengthen. Mm. Um, so, you know, Clement will be looking, looking at the striker position uh, also. Uh, you can never have too much firepower, uh, in, my, in my opinion. And... <laughs> Is there anybody potentially that could return from loan? Like, how, what's, I don't know what the Hudgy situation is, Paul. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes mm-hmm. a freshness in, in, in new players can be players obviously returning to your parent club. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, but yeah. certainly as the, the, the weeks unfold, we'll learn a little bit more. Yeah, I think it's interesting with Rangers. You know, I mean, I like Lawrence, and he's come back and obviously seen him at the weekend, and I, I was impressed with him. You know, but I like him as a footballer. I've seen quite a lot of him in England. And when he's fit, he's at like a new signing to them. There's, there is absolutely no doubt of that. And then, as you say about Hadji, it'll be interesting, but it's interesting we keep saying because they all seem to be in the same area of the pitch. You know, all the boys that come back. And if you're talking about bringing another striker in, it means he's already made his mind up with two out of three. You know, that maybe thinks not good enough then. But it's trying to get rid of that. And if Rangers have got that amount of money and wages to be able to, I don't know where they're going to get that. Barisic, I'm not sure. Is he out of contract? He is at the end of the season, yeah. Well, that's probably yeah. something they will be looking at. And if they could get anything for him. You know, corner for Lazio, 25 minutes gone at the far side. Peter Grant, Paul Cooney and Craig Moore, ball played in, swept in right to Top towards delivery. Joe Hart. 
great delivery, punched away well yeah. by the keeper. No, no, Hart's done very, very well there because, again, the in-swinging corner um, has whipped him with real pace. Hart does ever so well. Foul, correct call, but good uh, goalkeeping by Joe Hart. A fantastic save. And do you know the thing I like about that? On Saturday, he had himself, and then it was Greg Taylor, then the attacker. And I just don't like that, Greg. You're a defender. I like the defender to be outside the attacker because if anyone knocks down in the box, he can turn and hook it in. Mm-hmm. But also the fact is, if the defender's there, the goalkeeper spent most of his time pushing his own player. Yes. For me, I'd hate that as a defender, yeah. him pushing me. And Greg, Greg Taylor ended up on the ground, actually. But this time, he never had anybody come and he was managed to get out there and deal with it himself. What you want to do, uh, and I'm sure goalkeepers want it, is, is that clear sighting oh, and, and, and two or three steps. Yeah. Yeah, where absolutely. you can go and attack it. But I don't think they allow that now, the boys, because they put their own defender next yeah. to them, and I think it's absolutely crazy. I just don't understand it. It cost yeah. Celtic dearly at the weekend, but they made it differently there, and Joe came in commanding, and it was a definite free kick. But you could see another left back for Rangers. What about Majowski? I mean, we're not trying to do a kind of carousel yeah. of names here. Or, or, Shanklin last yeah, week. Yeah. <laughs> could Majowski come to Rangers? Would you if you were? I tell, tell you what, I, I really, really like Majowski. Uh, I think he's a he's a great goal scorer. Mm. He's an international player. Um, brilliant age. I think he's twenty four. Um, no, nah, he, he's he's a player that again, you know, we've spoken on on this show for a long time about you know players domestically shining elsewhere. Uh, more so around about the Scottish players uh, and, and Reigns and Celtic not necessarily acting on that. Miofsky's a foreign player, yeah. but falls into that category in mm-hmm. terms of doing really well outside of the old firm. Um, I like him. I think he's a very good player. Why would you not inquire? Ask a question. Would Celtic inquire? I think anybody that's scoring goals, Paul, you always look at it. You have to. I mean, you'd beg not not to. And I think that's the big problem we have. And it's interesting talking about that because... The one we used to talk about last year was Van Veen, obviously. Now, he's not even getting in the squad sometimes, uh, you know, about Groningen. And they were t- but it was interesting today, they said they mentioned the fact that Rangers had inquired about him, you know, which was, I was found that strange, you know what I mean? I don't mean we found it strange, but we were saying at the time, I'm surprised it didn't happen, you know? Uh, and that, that was the problem that we felt, yep. top goal scorer, and you see the problems it causes Mull, when you lose a top goal scorer like that, it's very, very difficult, you know. And we've said that about all the teams that don't have goal scorers. Celtic have conceded a corner, so... And Greg Taylor was booked a moment ago. I'd like to see it back. Yeah, he, he, he kind of got, got caught, caught grappling. Um, and then yeah. and, and then the, the, the Lazio players got away from him and there was a little bit of grabbing there, so was that's there? why yeah, he got the okay. yellow card. Peter Grant, watch for this one. Coming a different short one. Back to... The far side, whipped into the box. Carter Vickers gets there first, gets a boot to it, and clearly it's going to be but, offside. Though. But I wouldn't yeah. defend him, but I, if you're looking at that from a scouting point of view, Paul, yeah. Yeah. you would take it back, okay. and you see what the Lazio boy done. He pulls a corner flag, and then yeah. two players come off. That's the, that's the signal to tell him what they're going to do. So as soon as he pulled the corner flag out the road, you see two, def- like uh, two forwards running out to the corner of the six-yard box. So that was the signal. So these are all the things you've got to do when you're scouting. That's their movement. If he pulls a corner flag, they're two coming off us. So we have to be careful and switched on, you know, if you're watching the games prior. Yeah, you don't get that in five live. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd give you that useless I piece like of information. It. Ah, <laughs> detail. You're 25 years down south. We're not wasted. <laughs> Any chance you could head back? No. But not before 70. Here comes Celtic. A forward chance for Celtic, but the ball is cleared. Peter, that was a good quick attack. As I said, yeah. they've done well to get the final third, but yet again, it's that final third, that pass... And to, got to give that, so they get behind the ball quickly. But I think we've had a few opportunities to do better with the final one, and we've just not done that yet. And if we could click that together, there's been opportunities because Kyogo has been on the last line, and I think he's holding them back really well. He's staying further up the pitch, which is allowing Bernardo and Matarelli to get support to him. Craig, still yeah. getting a bit of rhythm here. They are the actually last, the box. as the ball comes in, defended yeah. well enough. But yeah, Celtic have just had a few minutes there where you can see they've actually defended quite well. They've they've then grown in a little bit of confidence in terms of the the ball further up the field. The importance of uh, the support around about Kyogo Grant is, is is can't be un- understated in terms of for su- success here tonight. So if the ball's out on the on the far side, both, whether it be Yang or whether it be mm-hmm. Forrest. They need to be close enough, yeah. Yeah? and Bernardo also, because then once you've got those two players around about Kyogo for these little knockdowns there that Lazio just defend, you can get some real success on the back of that. It's massive at that level, and that, that's why when the ball goes forward, people always say if you're a midfield player, you've got to get the other side of them. 
because if anything gets knocked down you have to be first and defensively you've got to do the same going the other way mm. because you see Gunduzi's doing it with Celtic he's running between Scales and Taylor quite a lot to drag them back and if you don't go with him and to be fair to James Forrest done really well there he got down the side of the pitch but a great ball in with his left foot you know which we don't see that reverse. often it was a very good ball made them defend now Celtic have got a, a set play in a good area yeah. but they're hoping that but as I say it's a lack of inches and that's why Celtic end up maybe in a wee bit more Spanish yeah. they make about three or four passes before mm-hmm. they put the ball in and I can understand that because Lazio are much bigger but you're hoping there's a wee magic bit of magic come down here and so maybe a big scale or something gets on the end of it who's going to take this one then it's what 35 yards out would that be fair Craig Moore yeah, here like comes the, Matt Arreilly left footed into the box he's looking for the head scales. scales and he heads it down but it's uh, quite easily cleared Celtic not got that cutting edge at the moment have they they don't yeah. look they're missing some of the players. That yeah, they, no, they're missing. But, but Paul, they, I mean, now there's a. Ch- oof, if Lazio play a better ball there, but there's still the an break. attack down yep. the left hand side. Lazio, good defending by Johnston. It was a good tackle, wasn't it, Peter? Great. One v one. That's where you've got to be very good at in these games because you're going to face them with that quite a bit. But yet again, it came from Celtic in possession. And Lazio uh, at the goal line chance as they play outside the box Craig Moore a bit of danger for Celtic but it's cleared Defended, by yeah, but they needed Scales, a height and distance there from Scales they didn't get it played back into the box into the danger area Joe Hart though out quickly does well collects it does well look Scales he, he certainly he would have liked more purchase on his original clearance but prior to that uh, the free kick Paul you were talking about O'Reilly knocks it as a defender I liked attacking the outswinging delivery uh, and, and it was an in- actually he just hung it up to yeah, be fair he, yeah. didn't, he didn't really um, so it's interesting as well in terms of those set pieces and you, you know when you're attacking these kind of balls I certainly had a preference I like the outswinger well see in that situation because Matt's got such a good left foot with a whip on it I'd have brought all the players centrally near penalty spot yes. area right. and put it in at pace even if they don't hit it or they go on the end of it it's very very difficult for the goalkeeper with the amount of bodies in there yeah. And if you do it the words of the goal, many times you see it, the ball scoops oh, in it, the, the net without anybody touching no it, you know. Touching it. And I just think when you get into these situ- situations, you don't get many of them in no. these games. And I think when they come up, they arrive, you have to make much better use of them. 33 minutes gone, Lazio nil, Celtic nil. Thursday night, Rangers in action here in Glasgow. Craig, you'll be at the game, I would imagine. Aris, yes. Aris Limassol. Mm-hmm. So, so much has happened in the, what, six, seven weeks since they played them. Yeah. Uh, maybe eight weeks, and that, those were the days the manager, Michael Beale, had just gone. Mm-hmm. Steve Davis was in charge, temporary charge for two games, but it was a miserable night for it Rangers. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it but, was, and, and, and actually, that was the night when I would say that Rangers were definitely rock bottom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first 20, 25 minutes, mm-hmm. Paul, I think was... The wor- shot. was the worst yeah. that I've, I've seen. Yeah. Um, so certainly a different occasion come Thursday yeah. night and, and I think a game that Rangers uh, should be quite comfortable in, if I'm honest. I think they'll win the game quite comfortably. You expect it to win. And it's an unbeaten run under Philippe Clement, albeit that points dropped at the weekend or point gained, depending how you look at it. Yeah, but he yeah. did some great chances. Peter mentioned Tom Lawrence. He's a good player, isn't he? Yeah, um, he, is, he is a good player. He needs to... Um, to have a little bit of luck along the way in terms of staying sound, mm. uh, fitness-wise. Uh, for yeah. me, the issue is, look, I, I think the balance of the squad, and Clement uh, has touched on that, mm. I think they're top-heavy still sure. in terms of those forward areas and, and attacking midfield positions. So he, he's got to look to change maybe the, the balance of the squad. So recruitment, the next couple of windows, I think, really important. Cantwell, for me, if he's not yeah. playing as a 10, mm. then I don't know where I don't know where I want him. Well, I, well, I've said for the start, I think if you're playing that three and they're like two, three, one, mm-hmm. he's got to play in the left one if that or the number 10 position. I just think on the right hand side, and I've seen him as a young kid playing there, I just yeah. never ever felt mm-hmm. he went by anyone on that side. Whereas he's more dangerous if he steps and he can make the pass forward or he can have a shot at goal. Mm-hmm. And I just think he looks frustrated at this moment in time. Probably summed up with the fact that he dived at the weekend, which was yeah. ridiculous. You yeah. know, you're thinking, is that, and I'm not, I'm not, I can make excuses for him because I think, is that down to frustration, just trying to get anything? Because it just doesn't seem, and I think he feels frustrated at this moment in time because you have a, the love of a manager who brought you, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you've got another manager who's looking for something different. You maybe not be the top dog anymore, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you've got to go and prove it again. 
and that ha- unfortunately that's football you know that's yeah. that's what happens when new managers come in they look for something different yellow card for Celtic player Alistair Johnson who's got his arms out saying ref what happened we'll need to see the yeah. the replay but it's a yellow card Greg Taylor so the, both full backs you don't really want your full backs especially no. with Philippe Anderson because he's very very quick yeah. you know and that means you've got to mm. you know enough jockey them now more than tackle and that's sometimes an issue you have especially at this level well the Italian director clearly not giving us a replay because when show back I mean it's oh, well, here, here we go here we go oh he's uh, got the ball yeah he's got the full of the ball that's n- oh, never that's a ridiculous. yellow card it's that is Craig a, yeah now he gets the ball full he gets ball. the ball yeah. full ball he clearly gets the ball yeah, yeah. absolutely but, that, but that's the thing as well so yeah. that, that's not a yellow card who knows what's going to happen hopefully it doesn't work against Johnson yeah. but how many times in a game of football where you receive the yellow card, and you know it's not a yellow card, you're mm. absolutely ropeable, but you can do nothing about it. Yeah, I used What's to get a yellow card, but you said it should have been a red. <laughs> <laughs> What's that word, ropeable? Oh, <laughs> mate, yeah, like you're yeah. pulling your hair out. You're like, you're going, you know, especially when, as well, you're playing the, the European stage, when they are clever, they are waiting for contact, and boom, they're down. Absolutely. And you, or, or you haven't touched them and they've gone down, but, and you're like, come but I'm on. not being funny, I've never refereed, and I think it's a really, really difficult yeah, job. Sure. Anyway, Without yeah. VAR, for even take yeah, away yeah. VAR, I yeah, think yeah. it's a really, really difficult job to do. But when you you see the way the ball goes there, mm-hmm. that tells you enough. The yeah, ball's yeah, going contact. in the opposite direction. Yeah. You know, yeah. you've hit the ball first because if you hit the player first, the ball's going nowhere. Sure. Yeah. You know, or it goes in a different direction. Possession maybe doesn't mean a lot. Lazio forty six percent, Celtic fifty two. Yeah. So and more completed passes, just over two hundred for Celtic and a hundred. I'm making it up now because it's gone, but one hundred and sixty or something for them. Well, Celt- Celtic yeah. at eighty odd percent on Saturday. Sure, eighty one. You know, a quick break. It's nil nil at the moment. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy for your free energy home survey and bespoke quotes. Call oh eight hundred two double three five seven double eight. Let's go. Forty minutes gone. Lazio nil. Celtic nil. And Peter Grant, <laughs> so far, we want to say so good, but what do you make? We didn't miss much in the last uh, couple of no, minutes. No, there's yep. not been many chances, Paul. I just wish it was one-way traffic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. See, you know yeah. the pun there. Well but I wish it was one-way traffic here because yeah. Lazio have come in a wee bit, but Celtic have got a foothold again, to be fair to them. They've had a long-range shot there, which Joe handled very well. You know, But Celtic in possession have looked comfortable, but as I say, yet yeah, again, the most important part is that final third you know, it's the final ball in that area of the pitch has still let them down. And you don't get many chances, but this is the level, as you say, once you give it away in that final third, all of a sudden they're attacking you. And that's what you have to be very, very careful at. Important, important last five minutes coming to the back end of the of the first half, Paul. Um, if you're not going to score, certainly make sure you don't concede. Uh, but Celtic are right in this match. It's been very even. Um, you know, both teams have, have tested one another, but there hasn't been anything... Uh, absolutely clear cut uh, it's been a nice competitive match any standouts for Celtic as we head towards half time although obviously I think a... Skills again yeah. has defended the, the, the box well when it's come in he's moved his feet quickly and, uh, and, and it looks small details oh, but look at that as I say, oh, here we go, there's an attack Lazio coming out Lazio down the left they've got three players in the box um, it's gone for a corner again mm-hmm. Has it gone for a corner? Yeah, yeah, but I'm looking at that back post again. It's still a problem for me. If they lift that again, they've mm-hmm. got an overload at the back post and that's on both sides of the pitch. Now they've got another corner and we've seen the quality they've got. And these are the... As Greg, Craig says there, it's so, so important. You know, he defend this. It cost us dearly in Madrid just before half-time a set play. Hoping it doesn't... Lightning doesn't strike twice here. Of course, yeah. Late in the first half. Yeah, that it's, was the same over there, wasn't it? Any yeah. playing, playing about with a flag there, Peter? No, mm-hmm. I didn't see. Oh, he's just putting it direct it. in this time. <laughs> yeah, you go. Oh, in again. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hits the net, but the side net. So <laughs> nil. Thank God he wasn't holding that flag again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but he's lucky. He can see that a, a game pull. The delivery. This one doesn't work. Um, but the training, the practice, the repetition. Because he's knocking it in with some. Decent whip on it and he, good he pace. Notices, he notices there's no one, Celtic have no one on the post. post. He notices that and he's actually went for that there and he's hit Joe's side net. But to be fair, Joe reacted well and got across his line. Had well. it covered. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Craig, what are you thinking about Ryan Jack? Injured again after international duty. Um, the manager was talking about, you know, club v country. He's not saying it shouldn't happen, no. but he's I, asked, obviously. Um, it's a blow for Rangers. Yeah, look, and it's a blow for Ryan Jack. Um, yeah. Look, as a player, I, I went through it, uh, the, you know, picking up injuries and being out for periods of time and coming back and then having another period out. And I tell you what, Paul, it's soul-destroying. It really is. 
So I feel for the player, um, but at the same time, I understand the concerns um, that Clement has. Um, you know, back end of my career, basically at, at Newcastle, just as a shot goes wide mm-hmm. there for Lazio. Back end of my my career at Newcastle, um, the reason why I did end up returning home was um, there was no extension of a contract due to my injuries. Mm-hmm. It's part of football, unfortunately. Um, so for Ryan Jack, yeah, like I feel his pain. You just want these players, actually all players. To have a clear run at it, to stay fit and healthy, but it's a contact sport and unfortunately part of the business. I, I said to you, Paul, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the Scotland squad. I think that's the thing that could knock him out of the squad. I really do, because he seems to pick up these injuries, and I've said that because, as Greg knows, when you're playing international football, the games are every two or three days, yeah. and you've got to take people, especially the numbers, I think it's 23, is it? That's it. It's, yep. And it's three goalkeepers. Yep. So you've got to have players that you're thinking. And I know anybody gets injured, but if it's somebody you're taking, it's a risk anyway. And it's an area where we've got some great players Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And yeah, if it's a risk, Scotland. and I think that's one of the reasons that Ryan Jack could miss out in the squad. See, Liveramento played uh, the weekend for Newcastle. Um, different position, mm. but uh, just looking to the squad itself. Because I hear a lot of people saying, you know, the manager, Steve Clark, is really loyal to the players that have got yeah. us there. Maybe nobody will come into the squad. I mean, just thinking the squad in general, the Anthony Gordon chat, don't think that'll happen. If you do, please shout. Yeah. Um, England will cap him, won't they? They will, You would think sure. so. You yeah. would think so. Well, let's be, let's, let's I think that's one. I bet, if it's, like, say, Anthony Gordon. Yeah. And the other boy from Leicester, who was at Leicester, who plays yeah, Harvey, Newcastle, Barnes. Harvey Barnes. Yeah. If they two are fully fit mm-hmm. and available, yeah. you would have to sacrifice somebody for the squad because yeah. they're better than what we have. Half time, there was no VAR controversy or whatever, there's nothing added on. Lazio nil, Rangers, sorry, Celtic nil, Rangers will be on, of course, on <laughs> Thursday night, just uh, mentioning that. <laughs> Peter, nil nil, half time. Yeah, listen, Celtic will be pleased with it because, as I say, we've not made the goalkeeper work the first couple of minutes. Kyogo had the, the shot. Then we had another half sort of chance, the ball through, which the defender defended really well. Lazio, as you say, they've got that wee bit of threat. Now do they look at the likes of a mobile and that coming on because it's a they need a big result as well. You know, and that's all to play for. Which hopefully if they bring more forwards on gives Celtic an, an opportunity as well. But there's not much for Celtic to change. Celtic need know they need to win. But we we look at the bench, we've got Probably two guys we think got goals or can be a goal threat, as David Turnbull know. So that's probably the only two changes you'd have because at some period we have to try and get a winner if it's still nil nil. There is no doubt of that, and then that could open the gates for Lazio. Fullback areas is a concern. Oh, both, full, both fullbacks on yellow cards. Yes. Yeah. Yep. We spoke about before the game the importance of eleven players. Yeah, massive. Um, so that's an area for for Brendan Rodgers certainly to be. To be thinking about, there's no doubt about that. Because so, you know, thing with Paul, you know, like Cesare, they've been in oh, the game a long sure. time. They'll be saying, feed, feed the wide yeah. players, get them out of the fullbacks. So, Ralston obviously comes into contention. Who else, Peter? Does Welsh come on, maybe? Does he. I, I, move no, to the, I, I, you could play him at right back. Yeah. You know, you could play him at right back, but I think it's a game you have to win. Philip. You know, oh, sorry, you're unless you're front, I, I know. Yeah, I'm it's a game. That's back. what I'm saying, even yeah, yeah. at the back. Yeah. Unless he changed the system. Mm-hmm. You know, went because yeah. he's done it once, he went he put mm-hmm. another centre back on. You know, Phillips could go on and play there. And then obviously you could play a right winger there. Yeah. You yeah. know, someone mm-hmm. there that could just go attack and fall. Still sacrifice still, a fullback. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. could yeah. sacrifice that with Tony Ralston on one side. Yeah. You know, and be willing to sacrifice the other one. But you're right, 100%. It's a big worry when you're both fullbacks, especially when you're playing European football because that is the place that they will try and run it and put on and the back foot. And Lazio will be patient, Paul. They'll be patient. Of course. Yeah, in Glasgow. They, they, yeah. they stay in the match yeah. and all that and if they have to go and throw the kitchen sink out at the last 10, 15 minutes, they will. Mm. Um, so there's there's plenty to play out in this second half, no doubt about well, that. They've got goals on the bench. We've oh, talked about sure. yeah. <laughs> You know, for sure. You know, and your Pedro's and Pedro. whatever. He's got so, 100 away goals. I read that the weekend. Is that Pedro? And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, he probably will have, yeah. yeah. Because it's funny because it's a record. all the international yeah. managers picked him and Chini used to get a bit of stick for doing it in the Euros but you could see why he picked him. You know, he's work ethic and whatever and he could nick a goal. And he was a big game player. You know, he's a big game player in that, that respect. So, I'm hoping he doesn't come on too sharp. Mm. On the bench for Celtic, the goalkeepers Bain and Morrison, Lagabielka, Phillips that we talked about a moment ago, mm-hmm. David Turnbull, home, O, Ralston, Welsh, Frame, a young 17-year-old defender, left fullback, and Mikey Johnson, yeah, left fullback, not a, actually not a not a bad player, right? Um, I think it's Mitch Frame. Would uh, you throw him in? 
And oh, that's, no, not at, not at this this moment in time. Um, only because of the yellow cards if you're just tuning in. So, yeah, uh, Greg yeah, yeah. got a yellow card. Even that, Craig, I only saw it back once, but didn't look a lot in it, and there was nothing yeah. in the Alistair Johnson. Alistair Johnson, Johnson, Johnson was a joke. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. But that's, that's the problem we have, because let's hypothetically, mm-hmm. he ends up getting put off. Yeah. Where's VAR then? <laughs> and I know they're talking about that now that oh, they're talking about VAR going for yellow cards but how long That's is right. that going to be the oh. game uh, you know every yellow card right could we go and check that and see if it is a yellow card God what's the referee's job yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you know and there's going to be sin bins in the future oh, apparently dear, dear. I don't know if it's gone through yet today I see Pierluigi Collini is there the what a referee he was though. wasn't he yeah he ah, refereed he some of your games didn't top he top notch yeah. he gave a penalty yep. against myself against PSV what? at Ibrox Um Van Nisselrooy? Yeah. Yeah, it was a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've got him for a tackle, and I yeah. remember seeing him back at the what was the Hilton. I don't yeah. know if it's still the Hilton on the yeah. motorway. Yeah. And, I, and I seen him after the game there, mm-hmm. and I was like, he goes, yeah, no, it was a penalty. I go, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I go you're right, it was a penalty. Yeah. I was raging at the time, but yeah, he got course. it right. He was a top, top referee. Oh, he was. But Number that's one. when referees yeah. were refereeing. Uh-huh. Yeah. It wasn't that's a machine, that. it was refereeing. That's that's right. Right. Yeah. His yeah. eyes, that. he just stared at you as well. Though, and and that stuff. was part of football. It's a worry now, Peter. Oh, massive isn't it? It's now over to the technology, and the technology's not getting it right. And I, we agree with you, we don't have goal line technology here. We've got far uh, light. Absolutely. What's that? Absolutely. It's <laughs> like a diet version. Uh, it's a diet <laughs> version. Uh, yeah. But also, it's, it's incredible, Paul, yeah. because it affects everyone if you want yeah. to do these rules. Yeah. You know, so if you talk about England, as they say, below the Premier League, they don't have it. Below the Premier League up here, they don't have it. Mm. But managers and coaches are still losing their jobs because of it. And I keep getting back to it. So how do you get to the Premier League here? Mm. It could be a big decision in the Championship. It can cost you dearly even to get the Premier League here in Scotland. So all these things. So go go like neck to, uh, technology and everybody's quite happy because it's the goals yeah. that people want to see. It's the hardest thing in football. They know that referees are going to make mistakes. But we get more criticism of referees now after seeing decisions we didn't even know mm. if it was a good decision or a bad decision. You know, because we just gave the decision, we just accepted it. Now that's all we're talking about. You know, and it drives me up the wall. And the most important thing is scoring goals and people can't enjoy that. For sure. Oh, don't what chance have we got? St Mirren fans are on saying, can you talk them up tonight? We spoke about them last night. Third top of the table and another win for them at the weekend. They are on a roll. I know they had a bad result two weeks before yeah, yeah. against Dundee, but my goodness, they've bounced back. Um, yeah, no, they, look, they've done very, very well. Um, Stephen Robinson has them well organised. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about that. Um, he has a clear clear way of, of wanting to play. And, he, and he's had players again this season that, that have probably punched... Um, above their weight um, he's now experienced also uh, a couple of injuries I know that Ryan Strain is, is out for maybe 7 to 10 days who picked up a knock uh, and he's still able to go out and get results so St Mirren have done uh, very well at this stage of the season absolutely yeah absolutely 100% they deserve having to get because they said it started last season I, I feared for them and ever since you know especially in the league the league form has been tremendous over the last, whatever, 14, 16 months. You know, it's been uh, phenomenal and great credit to Steve and his squad. Other games at the weekend, Hibs, the 2-1 win at Dundee. Hearts a win against mm. uh, St. Johnston. I see Shanklin claimed it. It was Liam Boyce. Yeah. Saying, oh, yeah, anyway, yeah. you know, he's yeah. another goal for um, Shankland. Uh, Kilmarnock took a point up at Ross County, 0-0. No, no. And we mentioned there, obviously, Celtic won, Motherwell won, Aberdeen won, Rangers won. So no change at the top of the table. Eight points in it so Celtic could have gone 11 points clear then it could have changed on Sunday Rangers had the chance I mean they had so much of the play a bit like Celtic different game of course Mm -hmm. Uh, Celtic had loads of play against Motherwell it could easily have been football is a strange game isn't it 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 could have been 3-4-0 your opponents put a hell of a lot of work in you know they're they're putting a lot of work in to stop you playing I mean it was like a 5-4-1 Mm -hmm. (laughs) 5-4-5 at times against Motherwell yeah. And they kept in the game. And to be fair to Stuart Kettlewell, later in the game when Celtic went one up at, in the 85th yeah. minute, mm-hmm. he put all his big guys on mm-hmm. and they got exactly what they were looking for, mm-hmm. a set play. And that's yeah. what I was saying, it was so vital. They got a set play and that was probably the only time they were in the box, really. And I'm, I'm not being nope. uh, disrespectful. They had a couple of efforts in the first half. Yeah. You know, one was Joe came out too early and the other one was at, um, off the back, the back, I can't remember who it was yeah, now. But- but, but in saying that, Muller will, they kept the dug in, and as long as the game's only 1 0, you've always got an opportunity. They got the set plate and they scored it, and that's what they've done really, really well. It's 0 0 in Rome. Lazio 0, Celtic 0. We're just seeing some of the highlights here on TNT. 
and uh, that was a real chance for them there. We just saw the header. It's the best chance just, of the match, wasn't it? That yeah. was the best chance of the match. Mm. In the end, Johnson, although he doesn't see Felipe, he, he's done enough. Um, the header into the ground and then uh, and by the goal, but that was the best chance of the match. They're doing the live um, update of what, how the group looks at the moment, aren't they? With Atletico on eight, Lazio on eight, Feyenoord on six. Celtic would be on two points. But I don't know why they do that during games now. I don't like it. <laughs> no. The, the game's it's still nonsense. in play. Yeah. And it's still got the green buttons next to it. Just letting you know, know that the game's yeah. still going on. Would, and I'm never, looking at it thinking, yeah. is that what they've got I already? I would yeah. never write the score down until the whistle is gone. Uh, absolutely. But listen, yeah. as you say, you're going into this ball. Yeah. And as you say, the second half is going to be important. As we're talking about likes of Motherwell and all that. Yeah. We're looking for Celtic to keep in it. We're back. Yep, ready for the second half next. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Tailored and renewable energy products to suit your commercial and domestic needs. Let's go! Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. This time tomorrow night, Barry Ferguson will be here along with Andy Walker. Somebody you know well. Uh, you're drawing the standards, I told you, uh, Wednesday's not a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the cheap night? <laughs> Tomorrow night it's Andy and Barry and Will will be talking, well, what are they going to be talking about about Celtic? Nil-nil at half-time. And, I mean, <laughs> what's the point in saying it? You, you'd take that result, wouldn't you? It's not going to help them for Europe, but yeah. for next season? Well, of next... course, yeah, listen, to get the points on the table, that's the most important thing. It'd be fantastic if they could get the victory. You know, we've been in this situation before. We've managed to get to half time here. You've done well. And there's not been much in the game at all. The game's been probably equal in that respect. So you've just got to keep going. You've got to keep that concentration level. And as I say, in that final third going, we have to make the, we have to make that count. We have to make that count now with the little chances we're getting. We've got an internal WhatsApp group for the football yeah, yeah. programme. For some reason, my phone has fired off a picture of Peter Grant there. I've just and, seen that. Um, exec producer James looking, both of them, mm. um, watching picture. and listening. Yeah, you've I don't del- know why you've deleted me again. So I've, you've I don't know why I've got one with you there for some reason. So I must <laughs> have taken it. I'm trying to go <laughs> between the different things. <laughs> yeah, He's missed me yet again, Peter. Eh? <laughs> Cut. I'll, 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 no, no, no. We'll, we'll get a good picture of you <laughs> someday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. There you are. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> so we're just waiting for the teams to come back, back out up. there in Rome. Have you played in that stadium, either of you? I don't think you no, have. No, I have not. No. As no. Celtic come up. So there's AJ is there, Alistair Johnson. We're just looking to see if there's any changes. And we're saying that because Johnson, Alistair Johnson, and Greg Taylor were both booked, we think, unfairly in the first half um, Greg yeah. Taylor's I've never seen much of I must admit no. but Alistair Johnson okay. definitely not that's a, a joke you know and Sword's Law that's what happens you know and you end up you get these odd on offs and you think back the first one was never a booking but there's nothing you can do and Brendan will be saying to Alistair because he's a competitor you know he's a very good player very good defender mm-hmm. but you've got to compete against the, the wide players and Philippe is very very quick there's the Celtic captain doing that motion that he does. How would you describe that? Come on, then, boys. He keep does, going. Didn't he? Puts yeah, it yeah. yeah. So so the old, what did yeah. you call it? The old. Uh, no, oh, the, yeah. Not, not the, the clacker. Noise. Not the clacker. Oh. It was. Uh, Before my time, but I know what yeah. you mean. <laughs> it was. used to stand with one, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are. The game's underway. Lazio nil, Celtic nil in Rome. So we'll keep you right there. In fact, immediately, is that Bernardo's mm-hmm. been whacked in the opening 10 seconds? See if there's anything to see back. I think the referee. I don't know if he's waiting. For, is, is going to be a check. Let's see what happened, Craig or Peter. Oh, he's maybe just. Uh, has he been? Oh, is, I think he's landed, landed on him. Landed yeah, on he's landed on him. Uh, yeah, it's accidental. There's no way you can do there. You're in the air. Both boys are in the air. It's a free kick for Celtic, but that's it. How's he done in the first half? And I'm mentioning him because these are players that wouldn't normally be in. So yeah, I, I've liked yeah. him and I've seen him. You know, and he's looked energetic. As I say, he was he was the one that was going up to help Kyogo from midfield, and I think that was important. Just a couple of times he into the final third and the final ball wasn't uh, good enough. Opportunity here for Lazio. Lazio breaking down the left. Yang defending there. Yang's done very, very well. Yeah, 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 very well. yeah fantastic. Well, yeah. yeah, no, matched him. Yeah, really positive run down the left flank for, for Lazio and Yang had to match it and be physical. Uh, he managed to, to do both. He defended very well there. As uh, Lazio come forward again, a bit of pressure. Uh, AJ... Has he done well there? He has. Yep. He's got the ball of Canadian international defender looking up as he got support. But uh, in that occasion, Yang couldn't hang on to the ball. It's important, Craig, isn't it, to try and keep possession? Yeah, to be fair, Yang didn't. He, he, 
it was a tough ball from Johnson. Uh, I just made that for, for, <laughs> 70 yards on to defend uh, and then he's been smashed the ball up. Yeah, but no, a lot of the importance and you, you touched on uh, Bernardo um, early on there in conversation. The, it's really important for him to, to try and be as close as he possibly can to, to Kyogo. You know, like I says, when, when Celtic are looking to stretch, he, he's got to go with because any more than 15 yards, Paul, is too much. Mm. The distance has got to be closer than that so that there's an opportunity if Celtic get in good advanced positions. Two minutes gone in the second half, it's still nil-nil. Peter, are you thinking soon? We'll obviously say, what about changes? James Forrest started well. I haven't seen so much of him towards the end of the first half. Would that no, be fair? It's very difficult because yeah. when you're trying to play, there's a lot of the ball in the middle of the pitch, mm-hmm. you know, and to be fair, the one great cross was his left foot, you know, but it's not been that type of game. As you said, they've shot off the wide areas. You know, as well, this is the one we got lucky there with Carter Vickers because you see where Felipe Anderson is, Alistair Johnson's nice. high, yeah. and all of a sudden, if he intercepts, Alistair Johnson's doing a recovery, and then that's where you have the problem with the booking because you've got to get back and get the tackles in, and, and that's can't. all. No, you can't yeah. because these boys are too clever and too experienced. Yeah. And Carter Vickers not like him. I know he'd just come on in the first leg against them in Glasgow and it became but Paul, costly. But that's yeah. what I've seen it in the first half. As Craig had just said, oh, it's a minute from half time. And Greg Taylor done an overlap. Oh, chance. Become Celtic forward. Ball played to the edge of the box for Kyogo. Great shot. Oh. Just wide mm. of the post. That's the best ch- chance of the game so far. O'Reilly right to Kyogo. And that was just what agonisingly close. Yes. Just Matt O'Reilly gets up on the second ball exceptionally well. Kyogo takes up a good position. Does, keeps himself onside. Mm. We get bodies in the box too. Yeah. Bernardo, you've got three midfield players in the box. So... It just agonises. You're, you're hoping maybe this is the only time you hope the goalkeeper does get a touch yeah. because then it comes back into play and you've got bodies sitting. Yeah. But it was a great opportunity. Good numbers forward. Uh, again, we touched on the second ball. It wasn't Bernardo this time. It was O'Reilly off the second ball. Kyogo gets on shoulder of central defender. A good strike that goes through legs, Granny, which normally finds itself in the bottom corner. As they break now into the Celtic box at the other end, a chance for Lazio. Goes out of play harmlessly, and uh, that's good news for Celtic. Tati there. <laughs> Tati yeah. Bay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, but that shows you. But Celtic, I was about to say, they get confidence from that, getting uh, a great well, opportunity. Well, you're talking about confidence, and then they get struck, though, and Callum McGregor does fantastically well. I'm actually surprised. I thought it was a corner kick. Because Callum's done, he's, he has given a corner because were, you know, I was yeah. wondering why they gave well, a back kick. You might make a good referee one day, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was bizarre because I thought Callum had done exactly what a midfield player should do. Get back yeah. in, help your centre-backs and you mm-hmm. cut that dangerous ball out. But now we've given another set play away. Which is always dangerous. Here it is, right-footed, out-swinging. But that. that's over the top. Yeah. A header, poor one. It was, yeah. uh, but there, there were the, the out-swingers, which they were doing in-swingers first half. Um, so the first corner of this second half. But yeah, but you see there, you go back to the weekend there, there Gendouzi blocks Alistair Johnson and allows the, the run, yeah. you know, but, and that's what I'm saying, and that's what coaches and managers get frustrated at, yeah. because he just stepped and banged them, and the, the big boy got free. Craig Moore, what's going to happen Thursday night? Rangers against uh, Aris Limassol in Europa League? Yeah, well look, I'll be honest with you, uh, I, I just felt that... You always are. Yeah, the first, the first, uh, the, well, the, the, the away match for Rangers yeah. against Aris, look, uh, was, was, was not good. Um, but I think, like I said, Rangers were, were also at their worst, in my opinion, at that time, uh, rock bottom. I think that there's enough now in terms of confidence um, with Clement. Uh, I think Rangers will, without being disrespectful, I, I think that they'll be comfortable in this game. I think it's a game that they'll win. Uh, I can see a 2-0 victory for Rangers. Peter? I agree. I think it could be even more, actually. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think, I, I've got to give the manager credit. Mm-hmm. I think the way he spoke about his team and the things he points out after games and talks about in the games, I think he's very fair. You know, if somebody else has done well against him, he's talking about Aberdeen started the game really well at the weekend and he hoped Rangers did that. But then when he looks at it, and it's funny because they scored so late, obviously, for him with penalty kick, but then he had a great chance, didn't he, with Lammers? Lammers header. Oh, oh, right in the middle of the goal. You yep. know, you're saying, wow, what a chance. Should have done better. Absolutely, and that's what I'm saying. It could end up being a victory for them and that would have been unbelievable way to finish it, you know, for them. But um, they're the small margins. Lovely touch there as Celtic come forward. Oh, nice. a play. Great chance for Celtic. Ball into the box. Nobody there to pounce. You know what? He's, uh, I'm not sure who was on the Yang, end of that head. Yang, he, Yang. Yang's got to be selfish and head for goal. He's actually tried to pick somebody think, out. No, I'm not sure. I think he's tried to head the ball for goal. I just yeah. think he's... Because I've seen him at the weekend as well heading it and it was not very good either. 
Uh, that was a big, big chance. I think he's caught in two minds, but he doesn't need to be. Just hit the target, make uh, the keeper save it. it. Just hit the target, he scores. I, I would be interested to see the replay here, Paul. I, I feel as if he yeah. tried to pick someone out. Okay. 50 pence head, as we used to say. <laughs> it was. Lazio nil, Celtic nil. Dare I say, Celtic looking better. Best spell of the game for them. Yeah, but as we say, at this level, Paul, sometimes that's, <laughs> that's the most dangerous because you think you're doing okay, yeah. you get excited, and you can see it. Look where Celtic's fullbacks are. You know, you have to be careful. At this level, it changes over quickly. You still have to keep concentrated because big chance came from Yang. But then, don't get that rush of blood to think, oh, everyone's got to go. Now, there's a chance for us because that's when these teams pick you off because they have that quality. Craig, what are you thinking at this uh, I, moment for I'm, Celtic? I'm thinking that Celtic should be 1-0 up. I, I think that's as, as good a chance we've seen in the match. Um, and, and Brendan will be... Uh, look, delighted with the way they've come out at the start of the second half, but these are the chances you have to take uh, because they normally at this level come back and bite in the backside. And he took it so well, didn't he? It just went past the post. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he looked great ball in. I think yeah. it, it was it Taylor. I think it was Taylor that gets him from the outside. Uh, it's a good ball to the back post. Uh, and Yang, yeah, like I said, I'd like to see it again because hey, the you pace get, was on the have ball. Have you got glasses for him there? He said he went by the post. You know, did it back into play? Not yeah. who? I mean, I know. Oh, that's what Paul said. No. Yeah, that's, that's why I think he was Kyle. trying to pick somebody out. No, that, that was the Yang yeah. the header. Yang's yeah. header. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And we come back and we're saying, what a chance. Uh, there's, if you're the wide player getting in at the back post, you have to hit the target there because there's nobody there and I've got the overload, Paul. We were worried about Lazio yeah. doing it in the first one. I'm not going to see it now. You know, and uh, what a chance. At this level, you've got to make the keeper work. And that's unfortunate. Even, even you're scoring that, aren't you? Oh, I'd love to think so. You know, <laughs> Dive, yeah, diving header? I've scored one header, I think, for Celtic. <laughs> that was against Kamarfi, about four yards out. I can remember it was... Well, that wasn't, that wasn't too far out. Corner that's kept, what I'm saying. Corner kick for Lazio, 53 Watch the block again gone. here. Watch, yep. watch, it's interesting. And this is what we're talking... The referee's talking about it now. Mm. But you have to make decisions here. You know, and that, that's why people get frustrated because this is what the VAR and that's supposed and to who's be. Looking for. Spin? Look at the back po- yeah. the back yeah. or the back post, look at the space. So they, do they try to execute look at look at good news yeah. Look, he's already looking at Alistair Johnson, yeah. look. He's already looking at him. And you know what's coming next if he runs look, oh he's looking. Yep, yeah, two of them down. A few of them down in the box <laughs> there, yeah. As a referee Yeah, no, no, nothing. They, they actually to yeah. be fair, they 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 were and again, early jostling. Yeah. Right, mm. early jostling. Yes. Just what right. you said. From yeah. and, and if he gets yeah. a if he gets a he gets a free header. If he gets mm. that on target, then there's no foul. Then he's not going to give a foul. That's yeah. twice he's got away from it. And that's the things, Paul. It goes all of a sudden. Celtic having a big chance. Yeah. Lazio well, go up and get a set play. And every set play they've had is cause of the bit of concern. Mm. I must admit. Who do you think Celtic will bring on? Because it must be quite sapping. But maybe you don't want to change it just now, certainly. Yeah, because, I think he'll. Yeah. I think he'll hold it maybe around about yeah. sixty-five. Mm. I think because he'll know then probably he's got to. And he maybe even go a little bit longer tonight because right. he's, he's thinking of likes of Owen that they've not had a lot of game time as in yeah. ninety minutes. And he maybe think right, okay, but we have to go for it. We know the reason why we're doing it. But as long as you're still in the game, what you don't want to change it too early. All of a sudden you've got two or three strikers on the pitch in the respect yeah. of oh Kyogo and all that and all of a sudden it goes three, four, five again. And we have to be careful it doesn't become like an Atletico Madrid one, try to yeah. win it. I think I think potentially um you sacrifice one of your wider attackers yeah. and maybe O comes and plays central. Yeah. More with Kyogo. Kyogo's got to stay on. I yeah. know he come off at the weekend, I believe, and I, that, that I, I think I a... think he would either take a Bernardo off leave O'Reilly in there and just drop Kyogo that couple of yards I think that's what he would do or the only other one as I said maybe he could even put I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, yep. David Turnbull I think even yep. on the left mm-hmm. hand side as the wide player where James is playing because one when he cuts inside he will shoot and he's got that technique to shoot and hit target, yeah. but he can also deliver the ball, especially if you've got somebody like O on. Of course. Yeah. You know? yeah. See what I'd like to see, and why I say O and Kyogo up mm-hmm. top, because I'd like to see him get isolated 1v1 with the two central defenders. Because yes. yeah. yes. then all of a sudden, a little bit of movement, and you know Kyogo's got that movement where he can get away from people. Now you're in. Yeah. Is James Forrest about to be booked? Or, no, I think no. it should only be a yeah. check and ball. I mean, should I, be, I, I, yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. I, I mean, mean it shouldn't be. But you see yeah. what the player is doing. You that's know, what I mean. about yeah, yeah, you know, and yeah, that, yeah. That's the problem you have, and that's why yeah. you hope it's not Greg Taylor or Alistair Johnson. Yeah. You know? I didn't think he should be, but you know, it's like they, um, they roll about. So 56 minutes gone, still 0 0. Celtic had a great chance there with Kyogo just past the post, and they've had a number of chances, but. 
Not as many. This is not the Atletico Madrid quality no. of team, nor that kind of night. No, yeah. it is not. You know, and but as you say, that these teams are capable of because they've still got an Immobile on the bench. We're talking who we can bring on. There is no doubt they'll bring an Immobile on, and then that gives you a different type of problem. What we've got to do is not think, oh, by the way, we're playing really well now and get sucked into that because that's what happens. Craig will tell you in Europe, you think, oh, but we're playing well here. We're going to create chances and then all of a sudden, bang, you're one nothing down. Away from home, but I'll tell you what, I think Celtic have been the better uh, so far in the 57 minutes. What they, they can't afford to do is fall into that trap. As, as Gnaik says, concentration, focus, because Lazio, even at home, they don't need to dominate the ball. They'll get a chance. Full analysis tomorrow night with Andy Walker and Barry Ferguson. Nil-nil after 57 minutes in Rome. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Tailored and renewable energy products to suit your commercial and domestic needs. Let's go! Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk.